Welcome to r slash malicious compliance, where you have to be careful what you wish for. Our next Reddit post is from No Sweet. My dad was a tire builder and union organizer in Detroit. At our local bank, there was always a sort of conscious condescension by the tellers for blue collar workers. My dad came in every week to deposit his check and take out cash for the week. He finished one visit, turned away and walked a few steps, then turned back to tell her that he got the wrong amount of cash. Before he could say a word, the teller snootily said, You should have counted before you left my window. I can't do anything for you now. He smiled, nodded, and walked out with his extra 50 bucks. That was a good week for us. For reference, gas was 19 cents a gallon at the time. The next week, he went to a different teller, and he waved at her casually in response to her frantic motions to come see her. Down in the comments, Baja Fan says, Many years ago, the same thing happened to me at a bank drive through window. I counted the money then and there, and I told the teller that her count was off. She assumed I was trying to claim that I was short, but in fact, I was trying to tell her that she had given me $10 too much. Her reply was, I don't make mistakes. Okay then, I just drove away. Our next Reddit post is from IBS Means No Pizza. Our neighbors can be funny buggers. Nice one minute, moody the next. There was a rickety old fence between our properties that I owned. We'd patched it up a few times, but we never really had the money to totally replace 80 feet of bespoke fences. The neighbors have complained a few times about our fence. They have 10 dogs, and they spent a lot of money on landscaping their garden. They demanded we replace the fence because they need a secure boundary for the dogs, but they made it very clear that they were not contributing to the costs. It's not unreasonable, but the way they demanded this rubbed me the wrong way. Generally, in the UK, there are no HOA rules on old buildings, so I can replace a wooden fence with anything we like as long as it's on our land and not more than 2 meters high. So, last month, we got a quote and arranged for a firm to replace the fencing. I informed the neighbors and picked a day they would be at work so as to not ruin the surprise. When they got home, they found the wooden fence and wooden posts had been replaced with 6 feet concrete posts and a wall of concrete panels. Now they look out of their kitchen onto what resembles the Berlin Wall. I also made sure that the smooth face of the concrete panels point towards us. We have bushes on our side of the fence, so we wouldn't see it anyway, but their side is right next to the patio area. They haven't approached us about it yet, but my husband told me that he could see the wife in her garden from his office window, and she had a face like thunder. <laughs> Down in the comments, Mabamba says, put a watchtower up as well to add to that Berlin atmosphere. Our next Reddit post is from Gun Death Thunder. A few years back, I had to get a new social security card here in the US. I'm a UK citizen who was born in Japan, and I was naturalized as a US citizen when I was 17. I discovered when getting the card that, for some reason, they had entered my birthday incorrectly in their system, and they said that I was a day older than I actually was. I tried to fix it over the phone, but they said I would need to come into one of their offices to fix it. Fine, I go ahead and do that, bringing my driver's license and both of my passports. I wait in line, finally get to a booth and lay out my case. I show them each of my IDs which have my correct birthdays. Then I get told flat out that it doesn't matter, what's in the system is in the system. Only my original birth certificate would be accepted. Let that sink in for a moment. I blinked for a bit and then asked them to look at my passports to see where I was born. They looked blankly back at me. I smiled and nodded. Oh, sure thing, I said with a Cheshire cat grin growing across my face. I'll be back here tomorrow to your booth with it. I'm guessing you're well versed in katakana, hiragana, and kanji, correct? What? They said, a little trepidation entering their voice. As my passports clearly show, I was born in Japan, so my birth certificate is in Japanese. Oh. They looked down sheepishly at their desk for a moment. What was your real birthday again? I told them, and with a few keystrokes, suddenly there was no problem fixing my birthday anymore. I left with a new appreciation of having a birth certificate written in a foreign language. Our next Reddit post is from Greeny Pie. I used to work at a supermarket, and at 9am on a Saturday the following went down. Good morning, would you like a bag? The customer said sarcastically, No, I'm going to carry all these by themselves. 
It may have been my underpaying job, the rude tone, or the fact that I was just so tired of customers being nasty, but I decided to go along with it. Okay sir, no problem. I then proceeded to scan all of his shopping and charge him. The man paid and stood there blankly, staring at his groceries for a moment before looking at me. Where are my bags? Oh, I'm so sorry sir, I thought you said you were going to carry them. Well, obviously I can't carry all this without a bag. Oh, okay, well, in that case. I then went through the usual, do you want a single use or reusable bag spiel? And then, wouldn't you know it, we were out of the bags that he wanted, so I had to call a manager over to bring some bags to me, which always took ages in the supermarkets. The customer then had to dig out his wallet and card to pay for a tiny number of bags, and then I handed them to him with a smile and a receipt. And then I just watched him while he bagged his own groceries, scowling the whole time. Normally, I would scan and then bag, but he didn't want bags to start with, so I didn't offer and he didn't ask. All in all, this 5 minute transaction took a good 15 minutes, and he never pulled that stunt with me again. I have no idea what he thought would happen while he watched me scan everything and pile it up in a very obviously non-bagged heap, but hey, he said no bags. Our next Reddit post is from Always the Noob. Shortly before COVID brought all manner of traveling work to a screeching halt, I was finishing up a job and getting ready to book my travel home. Normally, everyone would just fly, and in my case, that meant a nice short trip of about two hours in the air. However, this particular location and the route back home for me had an extremely scenic train route that took about 12 hours. And as a bonus, I could get a sleeper car for a pretty cheap price, less even than the flight. I asked my boss if there was any reason I had to fly instead of taking the train because the latter would save them money and he said it'd be fine. I didn't waste his time or mine by mentioning any of the above details. I simply booked my ticket and immediately sent in the receipt for reimbursement. Not 20 minutes later I got an email that said, WTF is this? I thought you said that you were going to book travel that would save us money. What do you think that you're doing booking a sleeper car? You're not one of the big shots here. Send me a new receipt for your coach class accommodations. Okay, as you wish. Cue malicious compliance. Since this happened so quickly, I was able to cancel my $150 train ticket without issue. And since there was no way I was taking a 12-hour train ride in coach instead of a 2-hour flight, I booked my air travel like I normally would and immediately sent in the $450 receipt for my coach class flight. I got yet another email asking me what the hell I was doing. Now, I'm pretty good at booking travel and I know how to find good prices. I knew that there wasn't a cheaper flight to be had, so I wrote back, Sorry, this is the cheapest coach class flight I could find. If you can find a better one, please let me know before the 24-hour cancellation window closes and I'll be happy to book that instead. Clearly frustrated, my boss told me to stop playing games, cancel the flight, and just book the damn train ticket. I didn't. I took the flight home, and I got reimbursed per company policy for my coach class flight. Down in the comments, Mario Almada has a similar story. I did the same thing. I booked a bus ticket for a 10-hour bus ride home. It was an executive-type bus that caters to business crowds. I'm talking all first class, with huge chairs that lay all the way down to sleep. I got an email within minutes of booking that my company was not paying for first class accommodations and had just booked coach. So I turned around and booked coach flight home and the ticket went from $190 to $450. F*** them. Our next reddit post is from no thanks I'm all good. Reading another malicious compliance post about phone companies reminded me of this. This was a good many years ago now. My husband's phone bill had a spelling mistake. I never really paid any attention to it because it never really caused any issues, until it did, of course. The mistake was simple. Think Rod William instead of Rod Williams type simple. One day, we moved states and put in for mail redirection. Now, where I'm from, mail redirections have to be exact, so that bill never got forwarded. And in all the chaos that goes along with moving, it never even crossed our minds that the bill had never arrived or been paid. And inevitably, my husband's phone got cut off. Once we realized what happened, we were all ready to fix the mistake, pay the bill, change our address online, etc. But no, it can't be that simple. You see, to change the spelling mistake, we had to provide proof of my husband's correct name. 
But for any name change, they need name change documents such as a wedding certificate or other official name change documents. Which my husband doesn't have because it's not a name change, it's just a spelling mistake. For some reason, his license or passport wasn't good enough evidence. We asked what we can do to get this fixed, and they offered no help or resolution. They just stonewalled that there was no possible way to fix the incorrect spelling. Okay, cool. At this point, we were getting cranky. Not gonna help us with what should be a simple fix? Fine, we won't pay the bill then. They responded that we had a contract, we had obligations, they had debt collectors, etc. We simply replied, but who are you gonna go after? And they replied, you of course. My husband, looking comically confused, said, but my name's not Rod William and I'm not gonna pay his bill. Good luck finding him. If you happen to send me my own bill though, I'd be happy to pay that. I have to imagine the phone rep had a shocked Pikachu face. And, oh look, the spelling mistake got corrected immediately. Man, when it's your money at stake, because you're the one who's going to go to collections, they're not willing to do anything. But as soon as it's their money at stake, then suddenly it's so easy to fix the problem. Our next Reddit post is from Moby Dick. I worked for a hotel chain restaurant as a busboy, and I had lots of other little side jobs besides working the floor. Mostly helping to move stock off of pallets, stuff like that. Sometimes I would clock out a little late if shipments came in later, or if it was a busy day and large shipments always guaranteed another hour on the clock. We got a new manager who looked at my time card during her first week as new manager. She was real aggressive with me, asking me why I clocked out so late. So what's up with this? You're playing video games on the clock for an hour? Hmm, just hanging out and getting paid? I explained that I was unloading pallets and she said, You're a busboy. That's not your job. You clock out at nine. We have a payroll to make and we can't do it with people working extra hours because they didn't work hard enough during their shift. Okay, fine. Finally, about a month later it was summertime and we got this really late delivery of a bunch of dairy items. The head chef received everything and then had me start unloading it. This happened at 8.45 p.m. I told him, Chef, just to be clear, the manager said I have to clock out at 9. The chef said, but I need this thing unloaded. Well, I've got 15 minutes and then I get in trouble if I'm not clocked out. Do your best. 8.46 p.m. I go get the dolly. The dolly had been taken by the banquet people, so I find it and start moving stuff. 8.53, I load the first load onto the dolly. 8.58, I unload the dolly and go back to the pallet. At 8.59, I stopped what I was doing, left it all there, and walked directly to the punch card machine. 9 p.m. on the dot, I punched out. The next day, I got a call from the hotel's general manager asking me why I left all the dairy on the pavement. It was left out overnight, and hundreds of dollars worth of stock was spoiled. I said, well, I had to clock out at 9 p.m. The general manager said, did you think it was a good idea to leave all the milk outside? No. Then help me understand why you didn't put everything away. My manager was very specific that I was not to clock out late to unload pallets. She said it's not my job. Did it occur to you that the chef needed to know this? Well, I told him I had to clock out at 9 p.m. We've lost hundreds of dollars and wasted all this food. I would just like to go back to the way it was, instead of having to clock out right at 9 p.m. on my evening shifts. Don't do this again, just clock out when the job's done. The outcome was that nobody ever mentioned it, and from then on I clocked out when I needed to. It's not a real juicy outcome, but it was still nice to have that happen. That was r slash malicious compliance, and if you like this content, check out my podcast where I publish the exact same episodes. Also, hit that subscribe button because I put out new Reddit videos every single day.